In this video, we're going to look at Task Factory's Unpack Data Transform. As more and more people work with NoSQL type databases such as Hadoop or MongoDB, they are encountering data sets where one particular column contains a data set in and of itself. This data set could be in the format of CSV data or an XML file, but either way, working with it with inside SSIS can be painful and require a lot of complex scripting in order to extract the data. Well, the Task Factory Unpack Data Transform solves that by making it easy to extract this packed data out of columns. In the first part of this video, we'll look at how to use Task Factory's Unpack Data Transform with CSV data. Then we'll look at it using with an XML packed column. To start with, I have a data flow task inside my package. Within it, I have a single OLADB source control. If I open the control, you're going to see I have a SQL command. Now, to make it easier to read, I've placed the SQL command inside of SQL Server Management Studio. Here we are inside SQL Server Management Studio. And you see here the query we're going to use is our data source. It's pretty straightforward. We're simply selecting the top five rows out of the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2012 sales order table. To create our packed column, we're using a T-SQL command called stuff. Stuff is a built-in function that lets us take a SQL statement and take the results of it and store it into a column in our ending result set. If I execute this query, and I scroll out here to the right, you're going to see our sales detail column and it is full of CSV style data. Now to make it easier for you to see that, I have pasted it in down here and this is a single row data. So this represents the very first rows worth of data and as you can see, we actually have multiple rows in that result set. So let's jump back over to SQL Server Data Tools and see exactly how we'll unpack this into rows within our data flow. Okay, here we are. I'm going to click on our Unpack Data Transform, drag and drop it on the design surface, and we'll connect it up to our source. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and lay out the destinations. For this, I'm going to use the simple Task Factory Terminator destination, for this example, we really don't have to write the data anywhere. We just want it to flow into a terminator so the package will actually execute. The unpacked data transform actually has two outputs. The first output is just the raw output in which the rows without any changes or alterations are flowed out. And so that one we'll take here. The second one is the output with the extracted or unpacked data. So we'll drag that over here. And now I need to configure the unpack data transform. So we'll open this up. And we're going to go ahead and full screen this to make it easy to see. The first thing I need to do is indicate which column has the packed data. So I'm going to hit the drop down and it is our sales details column that has that data. The next thing I have to do is tell it which columns do I want to include with the rest of the unpacked output. Now these are the columns that are coming from the source external to the packed column. And it is likely that you're going to want to include some of these along with the packed data. So I'm just going to pick three. Let's do the sales order ID, the revision number, and uh, the due date looks fine. We'll click on the due date. The next thing I have to indicate is what format is the packed data in. My two choices are delimited and XML. For this video, we're going to look at delimited now, and we'll look at XML in just a minute. Underneath my delimited, I have the various options associated with delimited. For example, I can tell it, does my data contain headers? What's my row delimiter? Do I want a different column delimiter? By default, it's comma, but I could pick something else and the text qualifier. For this example, we can just take the defaults. 
The next thing I need to do is tell it, okay, what columns am I extracting from the packed column? So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click Add New. And if we looked at the output, the first column we want to get is the Sales Order Detail ID. So I'm going to click in here. And for the name, I'm going to give it UKP Sales Order Detail ID. Now, I am preferencing this with UKP on the front. This is just to make it easy for us when we look at the results to distinguish which columns are being unpacked versus the columns that are flowing from the original source. You're certainly free to name them anything you want to that makes sense. The next thing I have to do is tell the next thing I have to do is indicate which column in the pack my data is in. Columns are indexed starting with zero and going all the way through to the number of columns you have. Now, if we look back at the data set, we would see that the sales order detail ID is in the second column. But because our indexes all begin with zero, I'm actually going to put the number one in here. The next thing I need to do is tell it what data type this is. Well, I know that this is an integer, so I'm going to come down here and scroll up and we're going to pick the integer data type. With that out of the way, I'm ready to add my next column. For my second column, I'm going to pick the carrier tracking number. So again, I'm going to give it a column name. And in this case, it's column number two, which is actually the third column. So index number two. In this case, it is a string. So all I need to do is indicate the length. Now, unlike some of the other controls in SSIS, it's up to you to indicate the length. We don't try to default to anything because we found sometimes that can lead to errors. So next up, we're going to come and add our last column. And our last column is going to be the line total. So we'll come here and and the line total is actually in column seven. So I'm going to use an index of six here. Now I'm doing this to show that you don't have to use every single column. You can pick and choose the columns that you want. The next thing I need to do is indicate the data type. And this is a floating value, so I'm going to pick, say, DTR8, and now I can click on OK. Now let's put a data viewer on here. Enable data viewer. And let's actually go execute this now. I'm going to come over here to my Solution Explorer. We'll scroll down to our Unpack Delimited, and we'll click on Execute Package. And here we can see our data. The first couple of columns are sales order ID, our revision number, and our due date came out of the original data set. The next three columns came out of the packed column and indicates we have the UKP sales order detail ID, carrier tracking number, and line total. So you can see the Task Factory Unpack Transform makes it extremely easy to pull data out of a packed column and put it into individual rows in your data flow. Okay, so next let's look at using this with a column that has been packed with XML data. Let's continue our exploration of the Unpack Data Transform by looking at how to extract packed data which contains data in an XML format. As before, we've got an OLADB source, and we have a query that supplies data. The query is slightly different from before. I'm going to come back over here and show it to you inside SQL Server Management Studio. And the columns at the top are the same, but what's different is down here, we are extracting our data with a 4XML so that we get an XML record set out of this. 
Now when I execute this query and I scroll over here to the right, you're going to see a column sales details and in it is data in XML format. To make it easier to read, I've pasted it up here into the query area. And what you see is one long row of XML data. So to make it easier to look at, I ran it through a pretty fire to reformat it. And you can see I have my root sales details and my node sales detail. And then I have the individual columns contained herein. Now this information is important to know because you'll need it to make the unpack transform work correctly. As before, we're going to drag our unpack data transform onto the design surface and we'll hook it up. And we'll also use a couple of terminator destinations as placeholders for our outputs. And we'll hook this one up to the standard output. And we'll hook this one up to the output, which will contain our unpacked data. Now I open up our unpacked data transform. And as before, I need to indicate what column has our packed data. In this case, it's sales order details. And I'd like to include a couple extra columns in the unpacked output. Now I would imagine in most cases, you'd probably select them all. But for this purposes, we'll just pick three to keep the output small. And maybe we'll do the sales order ID, revision number, and due date like we did before. This time we're going to change our packed data format to XML. Now when it changes, you're going to see a few things change. Instead of my delimiters, I now have my root XPath query. For that, I'll need to start with two slashes to indicate the root, and then I need to indicate sales details slash sales detail single. And if you remember from the previous screen, that was the root node and then the individual node. Now that I have that, I can start adding new columns. We'll come down here and click the add new button. And the first column name I'm going to add is we'll use the same UPK we did before. And this is going to be my sales order detail ID. And instead of indicating a column number, in this case, we're going to implement an XPath query. And, and all that really means is we need to indicate the column name out of our XML file. Because it's an XPath query, I need to actually refer back to the root node. To do so, I have a nice little shortcut. I just put period slash, which evaluates out to the sales detail slash sales detail. And now I simply add that column name, sales order detail ID. And its data type is going to be an integer. So I'll just change this to DTI4. We'll add our next column. And this is going to be my carrier tracking number. And as before, we'll indicate the root by using the shortcut of dot slash. Carrier tracking number. And this is indeed a string, so we just indicate how big it is. It's 50. And we add one more column. And this is going to be UPK. And this is our line total. And we'll change its data type to a real. And we're going to click on OK. And we're going to add a data viewer to our unpacked output. And now we should be able to run the package. And here we go. And we'll go ahead and full screen this. And sure enough, 
there is my unpacked data. You can see we have the ID number, carrier tracking number, and our line total. So with this, you can see how easy it is to work with the packed data that is coming from more and more disparate data sources and using these within your SSIS data flows. In this example, I have pulled data from SQL Server, but you're not limited to that. Any data source which has packed data in CSV or XML format can be used within your SSIS workflows.